The video you're about to watch is from one of our spirit schools. God Ministries presents it, preached by Gustave Leroux. Um, you will greatly be propelled by this message. You will be blessed in every way. I would urge you to subscribe. Have a great day. Thank you. Bless you. I really believe that tonight the Father wants to bring an understanding and a revelation to the body of Christ regarding who we are. You know, when I, when I go in the Spirit, and I know that you experience this yourself, but when I enter into the Spirit, I immediately are in, intertwined with the fullness of Yahweh, and it's a dimension of revelation, infused understanding of who He is. That to bring it to the earth, and to bring the earth an understanding of who He is, there's almost no words for it. Because we are so limited by theology, we are so restricted by what the church has taught. When the oracle starts speaking and the Father starts revealing revelation, it literally, the idea is that it opens up the heavens and those who are sits under it will be infused with a knowledge that will align you with the kingdom of heaven, that will align you with your destiny scroll. So tonight, that's what the Father wants to do. He wants to reignite a fiery flame inside of you that propels revelation, that propels destiny that propels your future into your today that will get you aligned with who you are in Christ and will literally shift you into what you mean what you need to become it is the voice of Yahweh in the Son it is the oracle that speaks that aligns Remind yourself of the frequency that you release when you speak in tongues. Allow, allow yourself to be reminded of the power in your breath. You know, when I blow into the mic, I don't blow into the mic to make a sound. I blow into the mic to release a frequency. I remind you that Yahweh breathed into the nostrils of man, Ruach, the breath. <coughs> Which means within my breath is the Ruach of God. That's how Adam framed the animals. <coughs> That's how Adam framed Eve with his breath. That which came out of him was Yahweh and the, the fullness of the creative being that He is, Yahweh, is inside of us. That's why our breath is so powerful. What you say, I don't you know you can't speak without a breath. So what you say, what you breathe out is what aligns and recreates your world. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> so Father, tonight, as we breathe our breath into the earth, like you breathe your breath over us in the heavens, Father, I pray that it will align your people. That we'll begin to understand we don't go to church, we are the church. But that's not some cliche saying to have us not go to church. We are the church. A four building, a four walls building is not the church. It's a building where the church gathers. Tonight, the ecclesia comes together so that the oracles of God can speak into our lives, aligned with what's available and happen right now for sons and daughters to go into. <clears throat> Father, we love you. The angelic beings in this room are very powerful beings. Father, we honor them. We honor them, Father, for the alignment that they are busy doing and aligning us with. We thank you, Father, for the men in white linen, Father. been experiencing all kinds of men of God that has passed out in the natural coming into the physical realm to hand batons over to saints to give mantles to us, me and you 
But we've been so afraid of it. Because we've only known the perverse side of it. And I remind you, if there's a perverse side of something, there has to be an original. If Satan could perverse something, he had to pervert an original. So we want to go into the original. If there's a cloud of witnesses, men of old, walking the face of the earth, looking to, to give over battens of revelation, inside of knowledge, a part of destiny, we take it. If there's mantles to be handed over from these saints, we take it. Father, we honor you, we love you, we glorify you, we magnify you tonight. Lord, I pray that you will ignite a flame of passion into every heart here tonight. And we'll begin to understand who you are. Even just touch base behind what we've been taught. We love you, my King. And I don't know why I want to say it, but tonight we want to declare this truth. The Bible is not our God. The Bible is not our God. It's Jesus Christ, the living word. Yes. Amen. And yes, in him, it touches base. The Bible touches base. But our God is not locked and sealed into a box of man's perception. Amen. And Father, Amen. according to what we believe, you are bound. To our perception and so father we want to break that barrier tonight we want to literally command every demonic entity that has blocked us from sight understanding perception and we tell them to go we will stand before you my king in the heavens where satan cannot go where satan cannot see us and we want to protrude into your heart and have that heartbeat within that kingdom within you begin to lead and direct our every step I want you to pray in your heavenly language. Either softly or loud, whichever you prefer. But I want to remind you that as you speak these words that your soul does not understand, have it known to let it be known to you that it's a frequency that you're releasing from your spirit man to align your being with heaven. I want you to begin to feel that vibration, that shaking that take place in your spirit, in your soul, in your body, when you begin to align yourself with heaven. And I want you to find yourself within the heavens uh, according to what you see with your third eye. And that's not a demonic statement. That's not a demonic word. Your third eye is the eyes of your soul which has been blinded. Now you might not know this, but the eyes of your soul has been blinded through theology and what we've been taught. Because they have told us you're not allowed to use that eye, which is imagination. Which is a word that I despise because it's not a word that should exist. In essence, I'm not making anything up because that's what I immediately think when I think of imagination. I'm making something up. But in reality, it is the understanding, it's the enlightenment of my understanding. All of a sudden, my soul begins to see what my spirit sees and that begins a pictorial a visualization of what's being revealed to my spirit and it begins to have uh, resonate, resonate, resonance in my soul. So right now I want you to begin to see what your soul, I want you to begin to see with your soul what your spirit's doing. And remind yourself, you are your spirit. The real you is your spirit. So like this is real to, to my soul and my body, the spirit realm is that real to my spirit. Father, we glorify you. We exalt your holy majestic name, my King. Now, I want to tell you something. 95% of what Yeshua did in the earth was not seen. Only 5% of what he did in the earth was physically seen. Everything else he did was done in the spirit. 
Yet the 5% that sin has revolutionized our understanding of Christianity. But I need you to understand the Father wants that understanding to come back into the body of Christ. That 95% of your existence is in the spirit realm and then it will begin to reflect it into the earth. And that's where we have not been. I want to switch the light on for me. So I really believe that tonight the Father wants to bring us to that place. But we begin to understand, now we've been teaching on this for many years. I say many years, it's about three years um, in this specific school. And I just want to get, I get, just want us to begin to understand that unless you walk in the fullness of it, it's just going to be head knowledge. Yes. That's, yes. Right. That's, That's right. why uh, the idea of a teaching is not just for you to hear it. It's for you to immediately start walking in it. And if you haven't understood that every time we're done with the teaching, I pray a prayer. And uh, sometimes it's just... It just sounds just like words, but I want you to sometimes just go back to that prayer. Because I don't always know what I'm saying in the prayer. I don't know if always the significance of the natural. But I know that in the spiritual, that prayer is the activation for you to go into the spirit and begin to walk in what has been ministered. And I want to remind you, although it sounds really arrogant, it's not. When I teach, and I know that some of you out there understand what I'm saying, because you go out and you teach in the same manner. When you teach, it is, it is not me so much speaking or teaching out of a, 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 um, a, a noted um, uh, message. as what it is uh, conversing from the heart of God yeah. to His people yeah. for the moment yeah. that He's at. Yeah. It is infused knowledge, speaking out of the heart of Yahweh. And so tonight we're meant to carry on with the, um, the 12 laws of Zion, but I felt in my heart that we needed to go a different place tonight. So that's what I'm doing. I'm going to a different place and we're going to go into the tree of life tonight. Are you excited? Yes. 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 Now I just want to remind you, and I, I've said this many times, you are powerful as a son of God and you can believe and receive whatever you want to. There's no enforced revelation onto you. There's not to enforce my theology onto you. You have the free will to either receive what I'm saying or to run away from what I'm saying. But that's one of the reasons why we have spirit school, so that you come to us. Right? So I don't have to go to you. When I go to you, it's, it causes havoc. Yes. But when you come to me, you're ready for it. And the idea is that you open yourself up yeah. to receive what the Father has. That's right. That's right. I remind you that the tree of life is open for us to eat of. Yes, yes, Why? Because of Yeshua, right? Yes, right. Mm -hmm. So Yeshua opened the doorway where there was two cherubims and a sword. Mm -hmm. Right? That's three things yeah. that blocked the, the, the way to the tree of life. Yeah. But it's no longer blocked. That's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Why? Because we have access yeah. through the blood of Yeshua. Yeah. Because it's not just the access through the blood, it's access in Him, living and moving and having our being in the fullness of Yeshua. He is the light. Yes. So once we step into the heavens, there's an immediate access into anything and everything that's available for us. And it's all to propel you deeper into Yahweh, right? Yes. Right. Yes. Okay, so there's many different understandings and revelations regarding the tree of life. You can go and experience it for yourself by going in there. But for me personally, when I'm in the, when I'm in, when I'm in the Father, or when I'm in Yeshua in the Kingdom of Heaven, or when I'm, when I'm in Holy Spirit, or when I'm just walking in the heavens, I believe that every experience I have there is a part of a dimension taking place within the Tree of Life. Because everything I receive in the heavens, and I remind you, when you're in the Spirit, in the Kingdom of Heaven, there's an immediate, instant, omnipresence on you. Now, we don't understand that, but when I'm in the kingdom of heaven, I'm in more, more than one place at a time. Yes. And I have understanding of many different experiences yes. that I'm having all at once. Yes. Yes. So how that freaks you out of the natural is none of my concern. <laughs> right? But I mean, let's think about it. In my natural, I can't perceive that because I can only be in one place. Yeah. But and I want you to think of it like this. I can be talking to somebody while I'm thinking of something else. Yes. 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 That's rude and I suggest you don't do it. But in essence, I'm in two places at the same time. Right? right? Now, in the physical, it's a whole different ball game. Right? I mean, I can, I can if, you, if you ever notice, you can drive on a sit, uh, in, in a town and it's dry, and then all of a sudden it starts raining. And if you reverse back, it's still dry where you come into the rain, but it's dry, wet on the other side. 
Have you ever experienced that? Yes. Have you ever done that where someone gets out of the car, you stand in the dry spot, yeah. and your friends stand in the wet spot, yeah. like six feet apart? Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that weird? I mean, you can even put your one foot in the wet spot and your other foot in the dry spot, and you're in two places at the same time. As a matter of fact, you can go to Europe, and you can, you can even do it in the States. You can put your foot on the um, borderline of Mississippi and Louisiana, yeah. and you can be in two places at the same time. I would almost suggest that you do that so that you have some kind of a ground for what's taking place in the spirit. Just to have an understanding so that your physical body can understand, well, I'm actually in two different places right now. I'm in Louisiana and in Mississippi at the same time. How's that even possible? It's just, it's the same with dividing your soul and spirit. You want something that can physically show you what you're doing. That's why I tear up a piece of paper or I chop one piece of wood into two. But it's just so that my soul can understand what my spirit is engaging in. Yeah. Because when I go into the kingdom of heaven, all of a sudden, there's so many dimensions and realms. And, and there's so many things that I cannot perceive in the natural. That when my spirit wants to bring that into my soul, there's no understanding for it. And so my soul immediately just rejects it and pushes it aside. Yeah. That's been happening to the body of Christ for the last, the last 400 years. Problem. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. So one of the very first things you experience within the kingdom of heaven is you walk in the tree of life or you eat of that fruit. Now I say fruit, but per se it might not be fruit that you can physically eat. But in the same breath, our God is a multitude of multitudes. And if you want it to be fruit that you can physically eat, then you can have fruit that you can physically eat. Do you understand that? Because whatever blows your hair back. In my case, it's very... Either black or, or, or white. Because <laughs> I don't have any hair to blow back. But the very first thing I've experienced is infused knowledge. Just having the ability to not understand an experience that I'm having in the heavens, but it really being um, uh, 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 almost like a whole day in the spirit. Just walking and, and really not being aware of it all the time. Right. Being aware of it every now and then when I'm engaging it. But going, carrying on with my life. Walking with my kids, playing with, with them while they are uh, doing things and just having fun with my wife, going to the gym, doing my normal day, my normal yeah. chores. Yeah. Um, but in the same breath, engaging the heavens, realizing in my soul and my body that my spirit's doing things yeah. in the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. Yeah. Then coming on a Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday or Friday, teaching where I always have notes. Now, I tell you, it is my comfort zone. Most of the time, I will go through the notes as, as I feel led yeah. by the Father, but I don't need the notes because there's an extra set of notes that, that you can't see. There's an extra set of notes imprinted into my spirit as I've walked in the heavens and infused knowledge and understanding of the kingdom of heaven that the paper that I read or have in front of me cannot give me. And that's what the Father desires for the body of Christ. Begin to walk in this. That is what it means to be an oracle. Yes. That you speak of things you could not have known. You are teaching things that you've never been taught in the natural. You're revealing that's secrets right. and mysteries to the body of yes. Christ that you cannot have known unless it's been infused into your spirit. Yes. And then, of course, it's the alignment of the spirit and the soul yeah. that brings you the revelation that yeah. the Father is projecting into yeah. you so that the body of Christ can grow. I need you to remind you it's all about the growth of the body of Christ. Because that's his, it's been his desire from the very, very beginning is to get these babies out of their diapers. Right? right? I don't know if you've ever had, if you can remember the joy of taking your very last baby off of diapers. Can you guys remember that day? I mean, I remember that day because it, it's kind of in this week. <laughs> My, my youngest son is officially off. Now, you know, it's still, it's still the measure in the, in the mornings when you wake up, you measure the amount of urine in his diaper. Wow. You know, just to see, well, when am I going to be, because during the day he doesn't wear diapers. Yeah. And he's been extremely faithful in going to the bathroom, yeah. doing his thing, even taking his own poop and flushing it down the toilet, which is still really nasty and disgusting because he makes a big mess all over the place, but he insists on doing it himself, and it's just the growth that amazes us. We still have to go clean after him, but he wants to do it himself, just like he wants to put his own shoes on, the wrong feet. But it's the growth that, that, that is exciting, right? And it's the knowledge that, that although I still have to put a diaper on him when he goes to bed, during the day he's fine. And like... Two nights ago, I felt when he woke up the next morning and his diaper was clean. So the first thing he does when he wakes up now is he takes his diaper off and goes to the toilet. Yeah. So there'll be a day, yeah. like with all our other children, where they'll wake up every morning for a week, two weeks, and the diaper is dry. 
and eventually we can take that off. It's a, it's a risk. Yeah. It's a little bit glitchy because he sleeps in our bed yeah. most of the time. <laughs> so waking up covered, oh, it's so warm in here. <laughs> Having this dream of this luscious shower. Meantime, it's your son urinating on you. <laughs> Meh, not all that nice. But it, it, the joy of a father and a mother's heart is seeing the growth. Because I'm going to understand, if my, my four-year-old baby, uh, Hannah, my daughter, was still on diapers, we would have been worried. Right. Matter of fact, we probably would have gone to the doctors and psychologists and right. you know, whatever our, our crazy ways of the, the world leads us to go to, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. Because that's not normal. It's not natural, right? But at the age where my son's at, he's coming off of diapers and it's perfect. And the Father is looking at us today yes. and He's saying, everything that's happening up to this point has been delayed. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But in the same breath, it's the perfect timing. That's right. But we can say it's the perfect timing because, well, it is in God's perfect timing. And let me promise you something very quickly on Facebook Live, on YouTube, it is not God's timing. That's right. That's right. Okay, it is, it is us yeah. that delayed it. Yeah. Because God doesn't, He doesn't get ready. Yeah. You know, we, we have this mindset saying, well, you know, it's God's timing. You know, God's timing is not the way we think it is. Because God was ready the day you were born. That's right. God's been waiting for you since yeah. the day you got born again. Yeah. And He's still waiting for you. No, we're waiting on God. No, He's waiting on you. When the Bible talks about waiting on God, let me remind you something. When I go to a restaurant, the waiter comes and he waits on me. What does he do? He doesn't stand there with his finger in his nose. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he can, but in America, I'll get fired. Yeah. In South Africa, they'll shake his hand. <laughs> Not me, Jesus. In South Africa, you can't fire anybody. It's a massive process wow. of hectic, hectic frustration. Wow. And so, you have to get three written warnings, and then uh, still have to have a written warning within your written warning that states exactly, and it could be eliminated because, because you might have a written warning. I'm just joking. But it, it can get quite hectic. But I stand at a restaurant, and a waiter comes and he serves on me. He doesn't stand there and do nothing. He makes sure that I'm comfortable. It's almost like, if you look at it, he praises me. Because what can I do for you? Do you want something to drink? Do you want a napkin? Can I, can, I, can I come help you with something? What do you want to order? Do you want to drink something? Let me go fetch it for you. Let me bring it. Every time your drink is almost empty, which is kind of frustrating, right? But it's kind of cool. In South Africa, no. If you buy a Coke, that's all you get. If it's finished, you have to buy another one. There's no refills, right? Unless you go to uh, um, Burger King. The, it's the only company in South Africa that will give you a free refill. But anywhere else you have to pay for it. But yeah, you've got the waitress and they would come and they would top up your glass before it's empty. So before you know it, you've drank like four liters. What, uh, uh, what do you guys call it again? Uh, no, not, not liters. Gallons. Like two gallons of, of liquids and your stomach's out yet and you haven't eaten yet. And that's what the kids do. We go to a buffet and the kids drink so much because they keep filling up the glasses. <coughs> But it's, it's, it's the serving unto. So when the Father says, wait on me, yeah. don't wait on him like we wait. Right. Well, we're, you know, getting impatient, God, why is this right. taking so long? Right. Why are you not blessing me financially? Right. Why are you not shifting right. me into alignment? Right. Why are you not coming up, cleaning this mess? Mm. Because I'm God. Right. Right. That's why I'm not coming down right. to clean up That's your right. mess. That's, right. That's why I'm not coming down to push you to where you need to be. Mm. I've given you everything you need. I've opened up the heavens for you. I've given you blueprints, but you're too lazy to come up and see the blueprints and understand who you are. Because once you know who you are, you'll start doing everything and the earth would come into place. So now the earth is coming into place, not because God's all of a sudden saying, okay, they're ready, let's start doing it. No, no, no. You are starting to get ready. And once we started to get ready, things started to fall into place. God's always been waiting. Not waiting on us, yeah. like a servant, right. waiting for us to wake up. Right. Now, that might not be in your, your theology, but that's the facts. Yes. Right. 
So the idea the Father has for you personally is infused knowledge. Now, do you understand infused knowledge? It's okay. We don't have to understand it. I, mean, I know you've experienced it because everyone in this room has experienced it. You will share your faith with somebody and when you finish sharing your faith, you think to yourself, wow, I didn't know I knew that. Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever experienced that? Yeah. That's just a small portion. Yeah. The Father opens up doorways of revelation yes. the deeper we go. Yes. But we have to understand the tree of life separates my soul from my, my spirit so that my, what my soul takes in on the earth, which means... I'm listening to messages and I'm coming to church and I'm getting taught. My soul will consume that yeah. and want to then begin to engage in it. Or actually my soul will just listen to it and have a problem to engage in it because I don't understand it. Yeah. Because we don't want to engage into anything we don't understand. That's, right. That's why the church never does anything. That's right. That's right. Because we don't understand anything. Right. But when I receive something that comes from the Spirit of God, enters into my spirit right. and infuses me with a knowledge that I did not have, it will affect my soul and my body. Reminding yourself that in the kingdom of heaven, the Father's desire is to make you an oracle, revealing the heavenly blueprints. Now let me tell you something. Um, I've, I've shared with you before because I've been here for so long. But our ministry before I came to uh, America was different. And I see it every day. You can speak to any South African preacher. Matter of fact, you can go out into the earth and speak to ministers and they will sell you only this. Americans love the prophetic. Yes. So what do they do? They know for a fact that if I write on the top of my pamphlet, prophetic release, or prophetic revelations, or yes. <coughs> prophetic ministry, yes. there's going to be a multitude of people coming. Yes. Yes. So that's what they do. Instead of being an oracle, speaking from the heart, right. we're giving God's people, we're encouraging and blessing them. Right. But let me tell you something, there's a difference between to prophesy and to that's prophesy. Right. That's right. That's right. That's right. I can prophesy to you so perfectly that your jaw will drop. But when I'm an oracle and I speak out of the heart of Yahweh, I'm aligning you with your destiny and propelling you deeper into who you're meant to be. Yes. I'm not to please you. But I'm in the same breath, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna break you down, but I don't prophesy over everybody so the offering is better. Yeah. And let me tell you something, it will be. Yeah. As a matter of fact, we will have to get an extension of a building if I prophesy over everybody every week. Yeah. Yes. That's right. That's right. But I also want to ask you and tell you that I do not want babies in this meeting. That's right. That's right. Amen. Now that sounds terrible. Where should the babies go? To church. Yeah. Why? Because the baby needs a mother. Am I a mother? No. no. That's right. I'm not going to spoon feed anybody. If you don't know the word and you want to come against me, you're going to get your butt whooped. <laughs> don't misunderstand me. It's not physically whipping nobody. I love God's people. But, but I need you to understand. The oracle speaks from the heart of Yahweh. And it's not going to be in your theological box. It's not going to be in your mind's perception of the word. It's going to be in a place where you've never been. Because God's people don't operate out of the Spirit. That's right. Amen. Come on. But when you begin to reveal the blueprints of heaven to you, then you know what steps to take. Yeah. Yep. That's right. See, when I begin to know what steps to take, everything changes. Uh -huh. So my ministry was one thing, and I had to work at it. And it was difficult because, first of all, I don't go to a pastor of a church and say, listen, I just want to come share my testimony. Because if I look like this, and I say to a pastor, I just want to share my testimony with your church, every church in America will open up for me. Because they'll naturally think what I used to be and what I am today. But that'll just be a big fat lie. Because I don't want to share a testimony. I want to preach revelation and mystery to the body of Christ. Which the, Christ, the body of Christ has no grid for, so it just freaks them out. Now I tell them, well, I'm a prophet, <coughs> prophet Gustave Leroux, <laughs> then the churches will open. Yes. As a matter of fact, I've experienced this myself, that I would, I would go to a meeting, and you know, if I preach at a church, I minister slightly different. 
So I don't mind prophesying over a couple of people. So I go to this church, I prophesy over the leadership, about 25 people, and immediately they want me to come on the Sunday. So I come on the Sunday and I prophesy over some people again, and immediately want me to come on the Thursday again, on the, the Wednesday. So on the Thursday, on the Wednesday, I do not prophesy over anybody ever again. I didn't, want to, I just, I didn't feel that that's what I needed to do. And of course, another church was invited to the same group, so it was this big hype. He's going to prophesy over us tonight. Woo! Yeah. And, and I didn't because I didn't. I, I felt in the spirit what was happening, and I didn't want to do it. Yeah. I never heard anything bad. As a matter of fact, I think he unfriended me on Facebook. Didn't speak to me. Wow. Didn't, 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 didn't communicate with me on nothing. Wow. Wow. That freaks me out. That's but that's where we're at right now. And it doesn't matter, I, still, I love him, and I, I mean, it doesn't matter, but that's the point. That's what we're right. kind of looking for. Yeah, that's right. And that's because we don't understand the difference between being an oracle and being a prophet. Right. It's the same boat at a different dimensional level. Wow, right. Seeking to, to come into alignment with the DNA of heaven. <clears throat> that's partly speaking in tongues. Now, I don't have to speak in tongues out loud for this frequency to be released. And of course, the more I operate from out of the kingdom of heaven into the earth, that frequency gets louder. And the idea of it is that it's partly of eating the, the communion, the, the body of Christ, drinking his blood. It's, it's, it all causes a vibration in the heavens, stepping into the kingdom of heaven, spending intimate time with him, because everything we do, as sons and daughters, in this point of our life, this point of your walk, is all based on intimacy. Yes. Yeah. If you want infused knowledge, you want to be an oracle, yeah. understanding the blueprints, it all comes out of intimacy. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> yes. If you want to come into alignment with your DNA, the DNA of heaven, it's intimacy, it's loving on Yeshua. Not the worship we used to. Yeah. Three right. fast songs, two yeah. slow songs, yeah. not going to do it. Right. Right. Even the soaking that we receive here in the evening is not going to do it. It is, yeah. it is you engaging into yeah. Him. Right. And it's not even about the music, but music's yeah. nice because yeah. it's frequency. Yeah. Right. right? But it makes it easier. Yes. But the idea is that I'm constantly worshipping Him, going deep into yeah. Him. It has to become a lifestyle. Yes. Because the idea is to have my spirit on the outside. When my spirit is operating in the spirit realm in the kingdom of heaven, and it, yes. it, it constantly reflects in and out of my body and soul, it overshadows my body and soul, yeah. and literally realigns me and starts changing my DNA. Yes. Yes. <coughs> Exciting, isn't it? Yes, yes, yes. Are you guys okay? Yes, yes, yes. Awesome. Allowing the source of living water to flow out of us by <coughs> actively engaging heaven. And I remind you, we've touched base on the, the, the tree of, of the um, river of life, right? And it all streams out from the tree of life. Mm -hmm. All of the stuff, everything you engage in the kingdom of heaven is partly you being in the tree of life, eating of the tree of life, because that's what the blood did. Yeah. It opened up the streams of life for me to go into, and it's a Zoe life. Yeah. It's a life that we do not understand. Yeah. It's a life we cannot perceive. It's the God type of life. Yes, yes. <clears throat> And I have to tell you that if all creation is waiting for the sons to awake, once their sons awake, wherever you walk, the earth is going to respond to you. Yeah, that's right. And it's not just a response, it'll be an alignment. Yes. The blueprints of heaven reveal as we walk the earth. Yes. Yes. Exciting, isn't it? Yes. The guys are looking at me tonight with a tone of your voice. <coughs> being reminded within the tree of life of the power of the light that we live in and that we have the ability in Christ to transform anything with the light we live in. Yes. Light technology is one, the way they made the pyramids, the way they literally made um, Skelet Michael, and many other ancient buildings was built with this technology. Matter of fact, it's partly the wheel within the wheel invention that comes from the throne of Yahweh. It's partly that which the Father used to create. And it's in us and we have the ability to do the same thing. It's a higher dimension of legislation. It's having the understanding of my breath. 
having the understanding of what's inside of me, having the understanding of what comes out of me when I project the fullness of His glory. And I'm not talking about raising the dead and healing the sick. All that's relevant and all that's great. But it goes beyond that. I love the body of Christ. We have made it all about signs and wonders. I have been to thousands of these meetings and I love these men. I love these men of God. I honor them. But I've never learned anything there. Yeah. That's, right. That's right. That's right. I've never learned anything. My full my faith was built up and it was awesome to see miracles. It was great. I love it and I still do. Yeah. And I listen to it all the time, but I've never learned anything. That's right. <laughs> Why? Because it's not for the ecclesia. That's not for the ecclesia. Those gatherings are for the world. And we make it all about the ecclesia. So that's all the church want. But when we begin to understand, while well, the ecclesia comes together and the fivefold equips, trains, and teaches how, we, how, you, how you minister and become a, a, ministry, a minister, and you go out and do that, it's when you go out and do that that the signs and wonders follow. That's right. That's right. Whoa. Right and that's awesome because we begin to understand what the Father wants to release. Because when you come to the ecclesia, when you come to the gathering of the body of Christ, the idea is that you leave uh, confused, frustrated, and irritated. Because my soul doesn't understand what the Father just taught me. Now I have to go engage. But we have this saying, and it sucks, that Satan is the confusion, the, the, the author of confusion. I know. He's the author of nothing. Zolch. Nada. Nada. Amen. I am trying so hard to get the body to understand. Well, the more questions you ask, the better for you. Yeah. But we only ask questions when we get confused. <laughs> because the body of Christ think, well, if, I, if I'm confused, then it must be the devil. And I really don't want the devil near me. So I'm just going to act as if I know everything. And so we never ask any questions. Oh. Wow. So isn't that trick of his working well? Uh. But when I'm confused, or I don't understand, or I, I feel like I've shifted into a new dimension, and the new dimension I'm at is also a new level, and the previous level I was master, but now I'm baby again, um, let me ask some questions. Amen. Amen. Thank you. you know, only very recently I've had the ability, or I have the ability in, in, in men and women that's mentored me in the last six years to, to be able to ask them questions and they actually respond back to me. Wow. And it's really nice. Yeah. It's not often I can ask somebody, listen, um, this is what me and my archangel have been talking about in discussion. Now, I really want to know what do I do to have him respond to me in the manner that I want him to respond to me. How many people can you ask that question to? <laughs> you know, I ask that to a question to my pastor and he'll look at me like this and say, well, we, first of all, we get you one of those green jackets and we tie your arms behind your back like this and send you to a wall, a, ro a room with very soft walls. <laughs> the Tree of Life teaches you to, on a regular basis, go into the heavens to be cleansed. How many of you understand the high priest goes in and he is filthy? Yes. The high priest. The high priest was the most holy man in the entire world at that point. And he goes in there and he's filthy. Yes. Now we have got the blood of Yeshua, but how many of you understand? I can have the blood of Yeshua covering me physically. Yes. And I'm still sinning. Yes. So is there a, a lack of the power of the blood? Oh, no. there's a lack in my desire, there's a lack in my actions. So when I go into the heavens, and I remind myself, I don't go into the heavens to, uh, because I'm clean, because then we'll all be stuck on earth. I go into the heavens to get clean. The idea of going in and eating on the tree of life is so that I get to the place in my life where I start taking those around me in with me. You know, isn't it slightly better to take someone into the heaven to see God face to face? I mean, I, 
I, I, let me tell you, if my pastor that I've known all my life, well, I know him since I got born again, I love him, I honor him, he's the most phenomenal man of God, I literally know. Pure, holy, set apart, his revelation is phenomenal, he teaches the body of Christ, he, he breeds five to ten thousand leaders in one body of Christ. It's phenomenal, it blows me away. But if he could align me with this from the very beginning, telling me, teaching me that I can see my Father yeah. face to face, yeah. That I can go into the heavens and not have to wait until I die. Right. Then my life would have been so different. Yeah. Yes. No, I'm happy for where I'm at because that's where they have propelled me to and I honor them for it. But if I was taught by someone that took me into heavens with them from the day I got born again to where I am now, 23 years later. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, where are we today? Six years Ooh. later. Imagine this was my 23rd day, my 23rd Ooh. year of walking in this. Yeah. Yeah. I believe I would have been living in South Africa Translating to America to do yeah. these meetings. Yes, yes. Right. How are you guys doing? Yeah. See, the idea is to take someone into the heaven and to have him see God face to face, not prophesying over them so they can become dependent on a prophet. Because that's the problem. The body of Christ is dependent on a prophet to show me who I am, where I'm at. And of course, our order is wrong. We have a pastor and he's the only one that's allowed to speak into our lives. But let me tell you something, you need a spiritual father. You need a spiritual brother that's on the same line as you. Yes. And you need a son. Yes. <laughs> Which means you need someone that's constantly talking into your life. You need someone that you can constantly relate to. And you need someone you can constantly teach. Yes. You need that. And of course, everybody needs that. You can't hold anything only for yourself. Yes. And I remember the very beginning when I just started walking with Ian and he started teaching me these things <coughs> through his teachings. And I started sowing into them and I just could not get enough of it. I listened to it all day long. I didn't understand any of it. I basically started preaching it because I was a pastor of a church at that point. So I started teaching on the dividing soul spirit a little bit. And it was amazing. I would not tell anybody where I got it from. First of all, because they thought he was from Satan. <laughs> <coughs> Second of all, I wanted to look spiritual. <laughs> that this was my revelation. God gave this to me. Yeah. So I wouldn't tell anybody until the Father whacked me a little bit. Yeah. How many of you understand the Father's got a rod? Yeah. Yeah. Not so nice. <laughs> but the Father has a rod. And why? Because He wants us to begin to focus. Yeah. Because I don't go up in the heavens so I can keep everything I experience for myself. I go up into the heavens, receive infused knowledge and revelation, understand, walk with an angel that brings understanding of what I, I do in the heavens so that I can teach the body of Christ. Yes. So it's not for myself. That's right. I very soon realized, well, I can't keep this to myself. This is stuff I have to share with the rest of the world. Yes. Yes. And it's only an understanding you get from eating on the tree of life. Yes. Because that's part of the life the Father wants to pour into you. Yes. <clears throat> Are you guys okay? Yes. <coughs> multiplying our lives <coughs> with the fullness of the heavens multiplying your life with all that which the father has not going to a bless me club right. you've been to a bless, a bless me club because that's what we do we go to church to be blessed we go to this place to be blessed everything is about me getting blessed I want to be blessed, but the Father wants to multiply you so the revelation, the knowledge, the insight, the glory that's on you that you have is, is given into the earth. That's why it says go multiply. So whatever I give you, multiply it. Yeah. So that's why God doesn't give cancer. Because if He gives cancer, we have to go multiply it. So He does not give sickness and disease. He only gives life, uh, Zoe life, the fullness of life. That's why I take that life and I multiply it into the earth. Right, but I can't do that if I just want everything for myself. That's right. <laughs> Exciting stuff, yes, isn't it? Yes, it is. Are you guys okay? Yes. Working in, in unity with other benches, with other churches, with other dimensions within the kingdom of heaven. And let me express something to you. I spent time with the seven spirits 
and I in the same breath understand that they will sometimes lead me to the 24 elders. Yes. Matter of fact, that's why I've been teaching on the 12 laws of Zion and the 12 laws of Jerusalem, because one of the seven spirits, in a matter of fact, counsel, led me to understanding, and I don't really even touch base on revelation regarding this in any way, fashion, or form, but counsel led me to the 24 elders, yes. where I've never even mentioned or thought of them, but every time you go to the throne, they're there. Yes. We don't see them or even focus on them, but at a time in my life, I just started focusing on them. As a matter of fact, I would walk up to them and I want to look at their faces. And I can, look, so I can see their faces even as we speak now. They have individual faces and they are normal people like me and you with glory and, and the radiance of the presence of Yahweh that comes out of them. The skin rippling with fire and diamonds and beauty that you can't express. Literally rainbow colors coming in and out. Fire exploding in and out of them. They are full of His glory and His power. We can't express and explain it, but they are there to open gates in our lives. Yes. 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 And I would never have known that unless I have gone into the presence. Yes. Uh, constantly wanting to sit in His glory. He says, well, you receive this so you can multiply it into the earth. Yes. And I think that the, earth, that the body of Christ would never know about any of these things unless someone speaks of it. Yes. Yes. And can I prove to you what they look like in the Bible? No. So can you tell me that I'm crazy? Sure, pal. <laughs> Again, whatever blows your hair back. <laughs> but you know what, what's the reality of this fact is, once you believe God said something to you, no one can change that. That's right. No one can change that. Unless you can prove to me in the Bible that what I'm saying is an abomination to the truth, not your perception of what the Word says, right. yep. then I will repent and ask the Father to forgive me, and that's why I have a spiritual father. And you know, I look at my, I look at my Facebook, and I don't see my dad all the time, but I see him share my stuff. Yeah. That to me is a, yes yeah. son, that's okay, go for it. Yeah. Yeah. I have uh, Grant and, my, and Samantha Mahoney coming onto my Facebook while I'm doing live videos, saying hi, saying doing good. Mm -hmm. That to me is, is yes. Yeah. I'm aligned. If I make a mistake, please correct me. But I'm not getting and taking correction from anybody and everybody. Right. That's, right. That's right. I will never do that. I have men and women in my life that's aligned according to heaven's purpose for me. And they have the right to correct me. Yeah. Exciting, isn't it? Yes, it is. I have some, a, a, a lady that comes to our meeting here. A beautiful, wonderful young lady. She was told not to come to this meeting. Wow. For three years she didn't come because someone told her, I'm from Satan. Then she started coming and she was like, wow, I've been missing out on this for three years. Wow. What is wrong with us? Why do we think that if I go to a meeting that I'm going to be so deceived, I'm going to backslide into whatever they have. Don't, don't lay hands on me. I might get what you got. Let me tell you something, then nobody can pray, pray for you. Matter of fact, don't even touch yourself. Yes. In any way, fashion, or form, because you're going to get what you got, boy, and you're going to die. <laughs> because we have this ridiculous thought that if someone lays hands on me, and they've got some kind of issue in their lives, or a demon that's going to jump on me. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't work like that. God doesn't operate like that. Right. I'm in the spirit, I'm in the fullness of His glory. Come lay hands on me. Right. Come pray over me. I can only just grow and mature. Why? Because we are the body. I don't say to my toe, you better not look at me like that, boy. My toe is my body. That's right. My entire body is, is part of me. There's not a part of me that I don't love. There's not a part of me that doesn't work with my body. If it doesn't work with my body, then I need to get it fixed. That's right. If it's going to bring harm to me, then there's something wrong with it. So if you want to bring harm to me, there's something wrong with you. That's right. That's right. If I want to bring harm to you, there's something wrong with me. Yeah. Yeah. There's desire for us to work together. My body knows, my finger, this little finger of mine, he's very cute. He understands this fact. You, uh, he cannot go into my eye. He knows it. I don't have to tell him every five minutes, no dude, you can't do that. I don't have to do that. He knows because it's going to hurt me. My, he also knows that he cannot be in my mouth while I'm talking. There's a couple of other places he can't be in either. And he knows it. Same with my foot. My foot can't just decide to... While I'm standing here talking. There's an, there's an operation that happens that keeps everything in place. But we work together. And I love my body. We need to love each other and begin to understand that it's okay. I'm not going to reject you because of your issues. 
Because then we're going to have a big re rejecting party. And no one's going to be around anybody. When you're in the spirit, you can see all flaws and all problems, all sins, all issues. And the judgment's always to life. <coughs> if the judgment's always to life, then bring your issues and your problems and I'll still love you and hug you and cuddle you. And let me tell you something, just by the way, no one in this room is biblical according to the word. Because you're supposed to greet your brethren with a kiss. Oh, don't take holy out of it. That's why we can't kiss. Yeah, can't be an unholy kid. <laughs> you know, let me just quickly say something, and it's a very funny thing to me because, really, um, in Europe, my, my spiritual father had obviously a team of people all over the world in the different ministries that he's part of. Now, Europe is different than South, uh, South Africa, different than America. I don't know if you understand yes. that. Yes. Europe is weird. For example, I'm really taking a leak. Now, that's probably not a sight anybody wants to see, but just picture this. I'm having it in the toilet. I'm weeing. And this lady comes walking right into the bathroom, busy mopping the floor, right around me while I'm busy standing there. And I'm like, right around. Hello? It's not part of my culture. And they don't have men and women toilets. They've got toilets. It's weird. They're not ashamed of anything. It's just weird. And so they've got saunas yep. where you can go in and everyone's naked. Yes. So some of these church leaders would go and have meetings in the sauna. Oh, yeah. Have a church meeting, like leadership meeting in the sauna. Now, I don't want to be funny or anything like that, but to me that's just... No. <laughs> I don't want to see that in any way, fashion or form. Oh, but I don't understand. For me, that's not right. Because I'm not used to it. But uh, uh, for them, it's fine. Yeah. It's like the two pastor wives that has to meet. The one comes, she's sitting at the table drinking a beer, waiting for the other young lady to come. And as she comes down the stairs, she looks at her and she thinks, Botox, <laughs> silicone, this woman's going to hell. As she's coming down the stairs, she's looking at this girl, she's thinking, she's drinking a beer. <laughs> She's going to hell. Right. Right. I mean, it's just our perceptions, right? right? It's our understanding. Yeah. It doesn't change anything. Nope. What's sin to me is not sin to you. That's right. Why? Because right. we come out of different cultures, different right. places. Right. Some things are right for you, but wrong for me. That's right. It doesn't mean that I'm going to reject you yeah. because I don't love you because of what you believe. That's right. That's right. Because if Jesus loved me for what I believe, then I've got some serious problems. That's right. He loves me completely and wholly. No matter what I do, no matter who I am, no matter where I go. And that's what the Father wants to get us to. Work in unity with others. And that only happens when you eat of the tree of life. And it's walking with the seven spirits. Will not judge with the sight of your eyes. I am judged by the sight of their eyes all the time. What, what this looks like and what comes out of here is not what they expect ever. Ever, ever, ever. The last week we had a gentleman here that, um, well, personally I think he looks like The Rock. But I met him in the gym and I just walked up to him one day and I started prophesying over him. And his mouth just literally fell open. He could not believe it. It was very accurate. It was just where he was, just what he needed. And I just prophesied. We became good friends, started sharing these revelations with him and it's changed his life. He came to a couple of meetings already and he's enjoying it. But it, it would never have expected me, and that's what he said, I would never ever have expected right. you, the way you look, to right. come to me. Right. <laughs> because they, we naturally judge with the side of our eyes. Yes. But when we step into Christ, and I'm not saying that he wasn't in Christ, he's an awesome man of God, and I love him very much. And he walks deep with the Father, very deep, that's why he comes to the meetings. But when we begin to look at, the, at those around us, yes. through the eyes of Christ, yes. then what I see, yes. whether it's sin, demonic, or what? doesn't matter. Because I'm not here because of a theology. I'm not here because of what I teach and preach. I'm here because I love you. You're the body of Christ. You are part of me. Of course, it is your responsibility when you start eating on the tree of life to share everything that is yours. Now, I'm not saying go draw the money out of your bank account and start sharing with your friends. I'm talking about revelation. 
the material you use. You know, I promote these men of God that have spoken into my life as much as I possibly can. Right. And, and it, it, it's, it's, it's just, and I wouldn't have done that six or five years ago. Yeah. I wanted to keep it for myself. You know, I wanted to be the one teaching it. Yeah. But I've realized, no, they have already laid a foundation. I take what they've taught, I've, I've in, go into it, I give it revelation of my own, okay. my own space and own, own side. And I teach it at a different level. And it brings greater revelation yeah. because it's breaking up into smaller portions. Yeah. And that's what I love because every son or every daughter that comes from a mentor will break what is taught into smaller portions for the body of Christ to understand in a greater yeah. measure. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. How are you guys doing? Awesome. Of course, what I love, and I'm going to close with it, what I love about eating of the tree of life if it expresses and explains the Melchizedek order. Yes. And how I need to grow in that. Yes. And the most important part of my, my, my entering into the kingdom of heaven is sonship. Yes. Understanding that I'm a son. Yes. Going and growing to become a king. When I grow into kingship, I start walking with the seven spirits. Yes. When, I, when, I, when I start walking with the seven spirits, they teach me how to be a priest. Yes. When I start walking deeper with them because it's a spiral movement, they start teaching me the oracle, how to be an oracle. But that, the oracle is all part of eating of the tree of life. Yeah. Yeah. Because as I eat of the tree of life, which is, which is the fullness of Christ, the fullness of that dimension of Yahweh, that I eat and constantly take yes. in. When I speak, I am aligned with infused yes. knowledge that comes from the tree. Yes. So when I speak, I don't just speak because I feel good to express myself. I yeah. speak because there's something in my heart because yeah. the Father has breathed on yeah. me. And then, of course, I begin to legislate. And legislation comes out of understanding what the seven spirits place you in in the position that you're called to. And beginning to bring things into the earth, because that's what faith does. Faith materializes the spiritual and the natural. <coughs> so when, uh, when last have you done that? <laughs> now, uh, this is a very small testimony. Unfortunately, it's not my testimony. Soon. But Justin Abraham shares a testimony where he's got $90. And the father said to him, well, again, it was pounds. Yeah. And the Lord says to him, I need you to sow a hundred. Right. And he's like, okay, well, yeah, I only have 90. Right. And while he's expressing his frustration to a father regarding the $90 and he can't sow a hundred, mm. 10 uh, pounds appears in his hand. Wow. It materializes out of nothing in his hand. Yeah. Yeah. So there he can sow his hundred. Yeah. I remember my spiritual dad talking to me and, and expressing some miracles that happened in his meetings where they would lay hands on pockets and it would literally swell up. And there would be money in it. Yeah. I listened to Charlie Champ. Uh, I think I said that right. And he would talk about, um, I actually saw a video of him in South Africa where he would call people forward and say, okay, look on your cell phone through your bank account and tell me how much money you have in your account. And the guy said, well, I've got 700. And he says, well, we're going to multiply it by 10. That'll be 7,000. So he says, okay, go out of your app, come back in and look at it again. And he looks at it again and there's 7,000. Yeah. Brand in his account. Oh, I take yeah. that. Yeah. So let's just begin to understand what can happen when we start eating of the tree of life. Yeah. But it's not something that's going to happen tomorrow. That's right. It's a consistent eating. That's why he says, eat of me all day long, drink of me yes. all day long. Whatever you do may be in the intimacy and relationship that you have with me. Yes, yes. Let's stand. Father, we glorify your holy name, my King, your majestic, your beautiful. You are just everything we need and more. So we want to thank you for who you are, Father. We want to thank you that we can come into your presence and not have to wait for your presence. We go into your fullness. And Father, as we as the sons and the daughters of the ecclesia begin to walk in the heavens, Father, in the full capacity of what it has allowed us to walk in, Lord, that we will begin to uh, eat of the tree of life, reminding ourselves that through the blood of Yeshua, being clothed in Christ, the, the, the cherub, cherubim and, and the fiery sword has been removed. And we have access in and we can yeah. eat of it as much as we want, Father. And that will shift us and align us into so many different places. And so, Father, I pray that everyone in this room will begin, begin a hunger walk, going deeper and deeper into the heavens, receiving more revelation, more understanding, taking all of what you have for us, yeah. Father. We honor the angelic here tonight. We honor the cloud of witnesses here tonight. We thank you for who you are, Father. We thank you for all our mentors in the Spirit, I pray a blessing over them. I thank you that we can honor them and just 
Bring glory to them, Father, as we can bring glory into your presence and bless you, Father. We love you. We thank you for your courts. We thank you for the power that you give us, Father, the, the dimension of honor that we can give to the saints that goes before us, Father. We thank you that you are a majestic, awesome, beautiful, glorious God that we worship, love with everything in us, Father. We thank you that you are just absolutely all that we need. I pray a blessing of everyone in this room, Lord. I pray that you will enhance and grow everyone to his full capacity and may us begin to walk in levels that we've yes. never walked in before. And our revelation infused that we've never seen it before. In the name of Yeshua. Amen. Yes.